What's good, everybody? Welcome back to Tales of Berseria. I'm Joshua Jericho. You might remember this is the hometown of Coffee Bean, who this place used to have people in it, and then we demonized everybody by accident. Kind of a sad and terrible thing. There it is. That's three Nord dolls collected, and one to go. Right. Usually that turtle shows up right about now. What gives? Turtles, loiters, embroiders? You mean, the turtles is late because he's taking too much time getting a new design for his robe? I knew you could follow along, my dear little oyster. Should we wait for him a bit longer? I'm sure your sister's reply has to be arriving soon. I don't write her those letters expecting to get a reply. They're more like an apology for not coming home to see her. But you can't go home because of the Reaper's curse, right? So why do you need to send letters and gifts? Soon after I left, my sister wrote me a letter. She said, I don't care if it's dangerous. I want to be with you. Maybe the old me, once I realized there was no fixing this curse. Would have gone home, prepared to do everything in my power to protect her. But I'm not the old me. Haven't been since I met Eifried and his crew. I understand. You found your place on that ship. Even if you lifted the curse, you wouldn't move back home. Do you think your sister knows that? I haven't told her directly, but I'm sure she's realized it. She's smart, and she's empathetic. That's why she never sends me a reply. You mean because she respects that you've chosen your way of life? That's probably how she sees it, yes. But understanding does not preclude loneliness. I think she doesn't reply as a way of showing that she disapproves. And you keep on sending those letters by way of atonement. I don't think it's anything so noble as that, but sure. You're probably not too far off the mark. A brother writing letters knowing he'll never get a reply. And a sister waiting for a brother she knows will never come home. You two make it so damn complicated. Just talk it out face to face and make up already. It's not that hard. Mm. At least the person you care about is still alive. Velvet. <sighs> Are we done here? Let's go. Dang, Velvet knows how to dump cold water on any conversation. just like you're an idiot I don't pity you at all cats invitation an invitation from cat that says I want to see Mew and Taliesin and Taliesin eat the cats and Taliesin oh okay now I have a quest okay sure I think is there anything else I need to do right here? I know in the next zone there's a thingy. Any demons in here I need to eat? Yummy! Alright, here we are at the Palamedes Temple again. This is the one that had all the puzzles in it. It's fun. But now it's got a demon in it. A demon that's eating other demons. And apparently it still has exorcists in it. That's weird. But they won't bother me because I have a potion thing on it.
Ooh, that's a creepy looking thing, huh? All right, let's do it. I'll finish this now. It's the demon eating demon. The more it eats, the more ferocious it gets, right? I'd rather not find out. Let's take it down fast. Yeah, I was. I had no problems here. Another one of these I probably should have done a long time ago. Has damage taken when holding only one soul. I don't know how, but we managed to beat it. It devoured other demons purely by instinct. Sounds kind of like me, doesn't it? So you've eaten a few cows or demons, whatever. When you're hungry, you eat. The only ones who put any moral weight on it are humans. Personally, I wouldn't sweat it too much. What are you trying to say? It's fine. I don't really care if I'm seen as a bad guy. I don't really know how to put it, but... I sensed a kind of strength inside that demon. Like a determination to continue living. It was powerful and frightening, but I don't think it was bad. Figures. Oh, Lappy Set, you just always know what to say to make me feel better about my horrible, horrible self. Alright, so now we are in Taliesin, and we're here because the cat box in the last area told us to come visit the cats, so that's what we're going to do. But first, what is this? Is the world going to be destroyed by the bad guys? By this calamity monster? What I tell you about asking weird questions to strangers? Sorry, he's a real handful. I don't mind. My little brother was full of curiosity, too. Always asking everyone all sorts of questions. Oh, is this your brother? No, I'm not. So the world's gonna be destroyed? What would you say if I said yes? I don't want to be destroyed! I want to be a pirate and explore the world, and I wouldn't be able to have my sister's meatballs anymore! So, what will you do about it? I'll stop that monster! I'll protect my sister! Then you'll need to get stronger. The Lord of Calamity is really tough. Stronger than a demon or a dragon? You bet. But you'll still fight her? I will! Good answer. As a reward, I'll give you a good tip. If you want to get stronger, you'll need to get your own compass first. A compass? Isn't that for ships? That'll make me stronger? Yes. I know a boy who found a compass. With it, he traveled the world and got really strong. Wow. I'll find the compass and get strong, too! That was cute. Where are my cats? I'm finally done cleaning up the house. This house has plenty of room. We can add more to our family and still be fine. But that means I'd have to work that much harder, too. It won't be so bad. As long as we work together as a family, it'll be okay. Yeah, and Zavid will help out, too. Yeah, that's right. We always help each other in times of need, just like the way Zavid does. <laughs> Aren't you the bossy one? But I hear you. We'll do it Zavid's way. Yeah! I hope Zavid comes over to play soon. Zavid. We should ask them how they know him. Yes, we should. I'll handle it. I didn't expect there to be any more Zavid. This is interesting. I'm Eleanor Hume, an exorcist with the Abbey. I'm terribly sorry to intrude. But I was hoping you would tell me how you all know Zavid. Oh, do you know Zavid too? Yes, we have a history. I was passing by when I just happened to hear his name, and I thought I'd ask. Oh, sure. Well, we feel like we owe him a great deal. I guess it all started when he kidnapped us. 
Kidnapped you? Let me explain. My wife and I, we were both chefs. And one day, Zavid showed up out of the blue and practically hauled us back to his home. There waiting for us were Theodora and these children. Theodora? Yeah, Theodora. You know, his girlfriend. His girlfriend. These children had lost their parents, and Zavid and Theodora took them in. Then Zavid rushed us back outside. We were so startled by how sudden it all was. We had no idea what he was going to try to make us do. But then he asked us if we could cook the children a meal that humans would find delicious. He said that Malakim enjoy eating the same kind of food as humans do, but they lack the skills or know-how to cook it. At this point, how could we not help? We made them the biggest and best meal we could. It was huge and delicious. The mambo curry nearly melted my face off. The pasta margarita was the best. Well, I love the peach pie. But yeah, after that, we ended up stopping by the house a lot and started teaching Theodora some recipes. We lost a child to a demon. Ever since, we'd forgotten we could ever laugh. But Savid, Theodora, and the children, they gave us a newfound joy in life. From a kidnapper to a savior, then. Exactly. Until they came along, we'd never even realized that Malakim have hearts, just like people do. It's because they do that they fight alongside you exorcists against the demons. I see that now. Right. What was Theodora like? I love her. When I was too scared to sleep, she held my hand and let me sleep in her bed. She reminded me of my mom. But Zavid was always so mean to me. One time, he even hit me upside the head. You two were always roughhousing, being dumb and breaking stuff and getting hurt. Hey, you want to fight? Come on, you two. Calm down. It sounds like these kids were well-loved. Yeah. Ah, but one day, without any warning, Theodora left the house and went missing. And Zavid went off in search for his love, leaving you two to care for the children. He asked us to keep the kids safe until he and Theodora returned home. We just recently moved here, where there's a port. Because our old town was too remote. All right, I think I get it now. Thank you for sharing your story with us. Zavid can be a bit rough and tumble, but he's a good man at heart. If he's in trouble, I hope you'll help him out. If not for him, then for the children. All right. Ooh, some backstory on Zavid now. We call this place the Spring Breeze House because Theodora was as gentle as a spring breeze. We feed the kids your delicious, nutritious meals every day so they'll grow up big and strong. It's what my wife and I wanted to do, but it's also our way of saying thanks to Zavid and Theodora. Zavid's stories about his travels are the best. I hope I can go with him someday. Theodora loves grape milk for I don't know. One time she ate ten in a row and her whole mouth was purple. We all laughed at that. Ha ha ha. They should have a story where Zavid... Well... I don't know. I was going to say they should make a game where Zavid is a character, um, an actual main character instead of a continuously side character, but I don't think I want that actually. We want to wield pendulums like Zavid. He said he'll teach us when we go. So we're going to eat as much as we can until we get big. That's not how eating food works. You're going to be very sorry if you go about that. Theodora. She must be that white horned dragon, right? She must be. I don't see any other reason for Zavid to risk his life protecting a dragon. To be living with human children who have gone through such trauma. The risk of exposure to malevolence would have been high. And yet she was willing to help them. To take them in. It's no wonder Zavid wants to save her. But there's no way to turn her back into a Moloch, right? That's correct. Which is why you feel you have to kill it. I don't disagree with your conclusion. But... But I think you're going about it the wrong way. How so? No one would stand by and permit his former love to be killed before his very eyes. Even when said love has been irrevocably changed. If you could empathize with him and talk things out, I think you two can come to terms without having to fight. For some things, Eleanor. Emotion runs too deep for reason to be heard. If he was so easily swayed that words could convince him, he would already have killed that dragon. But still... I'm not in the mood to argue. Let's just go. <sighs> if only I could learn how to control those flames. 
Yeah, it's all Lakbisset's fault. Way to go, Lakbisset. You ruined everything for everybody. Forever. Okay, we gotta find these cats, man. These are not the cats. Um, when I grow up, I want to be a maid, but that might be a little tough. I could be a butler. I've been to a lot of inns, but this place stands out as one of the cleanest and friendliest. Thank you. Words like that make all of our efforts worthwhile. Aha! Come, sinner, and repent your wicked deeds. Why are you whispering? Because everyone else in your group has been nothing but trouble. Not a single one of them will truly repent. What kind of place do they think this holy sanctuary is? I don't know what to tell you. You'll have to take it up with them. I can't. You know what they're like, right? If I complain about it to them, they'll just beat the stuffing out of me. I wish I could tell you that deep down they're all good people, but... <sighs> That's why you need to confess something. What? Why me? Please, I just want to hear a legitimate confession for once. If you don't hurry up, I'll put a curse on you. Uh, oh, all right. I'm so sorry for all the trouble that my companions have caused you, Father. Forgive me. No, that's not going to work. I guess I'm not quite in the mood to forgive that yet. <laughs> well, maybe you should repent for being such a petty, mean old priest. What the, I was wondering, like, as soon as I saw it was the priest, I was like, who's left to repent? I never would imagine the in view. Oh, boy. Well, that was worth it. But we still got to find these cats, man. Still we gotta find these cats, man. And that was not worth it because I did not find the right thing. That come it. Oh, hello again, Doctor. Good day. May I order a bouquet? I need it this weekend. A bouquet? Is it already that time again? You're heading to a ball again this year? That's right. A ball? Mm, same as always. Nico's favorites. No, I'd like to order lilacs this year. Lilacs? I thought I'd tell her the news when I visited this year. So, you finally decided to marry? I have. I could never forget Nico. Not a day goes by where I don't think. If only I'd made up my mind sooner with her, then asked her to move here. She wouldn't have been there on that tragic night. And yet, I have to move on. I think that's the right decision. We can't give up on our lives over those who've left us. We have to live. I'll make the biggest lilac bouquet you've ever seen. I'm sure Nico will be happy for you. And congratulations. Thank you. Why a lilac bouquet? Lilacs have a special meaning. The treasured memory. I see. I hope his message reaches her. Yes, I believe it will. It will because she's inside of me. And heard every bit of it because I ate her at the beginning of the game. I sounded a little more morose than I wanted it to. Alright, how do we get to this stupid... Mm. Josh getting angry. Rawr. Angry Josh is angry. Oh, maybe I finally figured it out. 25 minutes later, I might have actually figured it out. Angry Josh is angry, but not smart. Holy crap, are you serious? Tucked away ladder. 
run up here. Gotta jump this thing, apparently. I hate you, cats. I hate you so much, man. Meow, 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 meow. Your attention, please, for an important announcement. To commemorate all your hard work saving my friends, I'd like to invite you to come to Cat's Corner. Whoa, Cat's Corner. Awesome. But we don't have any business there. Now hold on. Cat's Corner is a sort of phantom place that's never been plotted on any map before. And we'll have the chance to explore it. If it's home to a lot of cats, I kind of want to see it for myself. Denied. It's a waste of our time. Oh, come on, Velvet. Quit being such a killjoy. Cat's Corner is like an exclusive members-only club. Nobody but nobody would turn down an invitation. Exactly. You should be grateful for this opportunity. Just think of it as a new experience. Besides, aren't you even a little bit curious? I can't believe this. You guys are starting to sound more casual than the cats now. Well, if you ever feel like visiting Cat's Corner, just say the word. Meow. Ugh. I really hate cats. I guess I have to talk to him in order to visit Cat's Corner. I don't want to go there right now. So we'll go on the next episode. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you then. And get a dog if you have a cat. Because cats are the worst. Ugh.